Monty. Uh, it's a great little private gym. Um, usually I'm showing you guys what to do or telling you guys different techniques and things. Today I'm going to talk about things not to do. Martial arts classes are ruining our children's bodies. Uh, traditional martial arts where you lock your arms out, lock your limbs out, snap the knee, snap the knee really bad. They even call it a front snap kick. Well, the whole idea about lifting your knee up first and snapping your leg and putting more starch in your gi so it makes more of a pop, that's really bad. It's really bad for the joints. And the children, by the time they're 13 or 14, by doing those classes, their knees, their elbows, their shoulders, their hips are being ruined. Uh, we all know who've been in the martial arts for a long time. All of the famous martial artists, world-renowned martial artists that have had to have hip, knee, shoulder replacements because of the wear and tear that those movements make. Now, wrestling, boxing, Thai boxing, combative sports, they protect your body with either protective gear, wraps, the techniques are made so you don't hurt yourself so much. There are new exercises that take power lifting and do them competitively so many reps will eventually, when you do it that way, it's going to destroy the joints. So the same idea, if I'm locking my back leg out in a stance as I'm trying to turn my hips in and punch, the strain on this area of the knee, huge. Fighters know they have to pivot, turn their body, so they don't cause that, and you'll hit much harder. You'll kick much harder. The snap kick I was talking about, if you push with the kick, there's no joint popping, and you'll kick, finally, maybe for the first time, much harder. A swinging kick that you turn your hip over, there's no snap involved. A pushing kick from the floor to the target, there's no snap involved. And that kick is an effective fighting kick. So I'll give you a couple suggestions of training concepts today. Maybe you think they're something you don't do. But if you do them, like let's say a, a hook kick, which has become very popular now in MMA. We call it a hook kick, some people call it a, a wheel kick, a spinning wheel kick, in which you're hitting with the back of your heel and you're hitting on the bag uh, in a spinning motion, catching with the heel or spinning with the leg up, which we used to call a crescent kick. For the exercise of it, that you won't ever hurt yourself, hit with your whole leg. Don't hit with the back of the heel, which you will hit with when you're fighting. If I want to hit somebody on the inside of the kneecap or the neck, I'm going to hit them with the back of my heel. But for exercise, repeating it over and over again, kick with the whole leg. That way, when you land that kick, there's no chance of injury. If you catch it right at the end with your heel, especially with a big heavy bag like a banana bag that we use, if I catch with the heel at the wrong time, it can cause a hyperextension. Now, you say, well, that hasn't happened to me. Uh, that's okay. Your knees are maybe superlative and strong, but for most people, and eventually for everyone, the snapping motion of anything, instead of a recoil punch that a boxer or any kind of combative martial artist or fighter uses, is what will save your body. Locking your arm out, 
The idea of yelling with your mouth open. It's crazy for fighters. You can shout and make a noise, ah! but if you open your mouth, ah! just think if you were to get hit at that particular time. Your jaw has no connection there because your mouth is open and it will shatter. So a lot of those martial arts concepts that are done in those schools and the repetition of kick over kick over kick, snapping of the leg, snap, 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 snap on the kicks, causing little subcutaneous tears and eventually the ruin of your legs <laughs> when your hips and your knees go, it's really a bad situation and you want to keep really strong legs. And you'll find out that if you're doing it the way I'm talking about, extending, swinging the leg, pushing the leg, you'll kick harder than you've ever kicked before. So these are some, suggest some suggestions. Think of this if you do a, a, a crescent kick, same idea. The leg is coming up, you can come up with a bent knee or a straight leg for exercise. And as you land the kick, it's my whole leg that I'm hitting with not just the end of it. And that will stop the knee from hyperextending. Now, when you're kicking somebody, kick them with the ankle of the foot, the heel of the foot, absolutely. When you're hitting somebody in the temple, but you're noticing, a guy will do a spinning wheel kick and catch with the some back of the calf, and it's gonna put anybody to sleep. So kicking with the whole leg is not a bad thing. Um, so remember, what's, and some of my students are now grandmasters, they're part of martial arts that are doing the snapping techniques over and over again. You love to watch your kids in the, in the class, they're teaching respect, they're, it's, they're teaching discipline, you love to see your kid progress, but believe me, those classes are destroying your children's bodies. And if anything I'm saying doesn't make sense to you, you want to get back to me, I'm going to probably post this soon, and we can talk about this, and that your technique, the way you're doing it, is not going to hurt the body as time goes by. Great. Let's talk about it. But I'm just trying to let you know that those martial arts that have taught those concepts of snapping, not good. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Bye-bye.